Welcome, welcome to Electrical Air Maintenance Course. So the agenda for this training is uh, the roles and responsibilities in electrical, electrical basics and terms, electrical safety, tools and equipment for electrical repairs, electrical wires, main service panels, wall switches, receptacles, incandescent and fluorescent light fixtures, and smoke alarms. So before we start, your full participation is greatly appreciated. Please take notes. So we're gonna watch your video like we did uh, in the other training and then we're gonna have a group discussion um, about the video. If you're a bit intimidated by electrical projects around your house, you don't have to be. We'll share a few tips with you today on how to change an outlet or a switch and keep it very simple. First thing we want to talk about is an outlet. Standard outlet you might find around your house that looks just like this. Before you go pulling this out of the wall, the first thing you want to do is go turn the circuit breaker off for that outlet or switch that you're going to replace. A couple of tools you'll want to use to change those outlets and switches around your house. The first is wire strippers. And you'll notice that there are several notches in here based on the, the wire size of, of the wire you're working with. When you put that over there, you'll put the notch in around the wire and then tug. And that wire, the insulation will come off, exposing the wire only. We also have a pair of Lyman's pliers. And these are good to bend the wire into a hook so that you can place it over, this, over the screw terminal. In this case, we have a green wire again. We want to make sure we put that on the green terminal. Another tool you'll need is a 5-in-1 screwdriver tool. This, as you pull it apart, has several bits and tips on the end. This one is the Phillips side here, two different sizes. We also have a flat head side where you have two different sizes. All assembled into one neat little tool. No matter what screw you run into, you'll be able to take it apart with this one screwdriver. Great tool to have. First device we'll talk about is a standard outlet. Standard outlet will have two bronze terminals, two silver terminals, and a ground. Your white wires always go to the silver terminals. Your green or bare wire always go to the ground terminal. And your black or red wires always go to your bronze terminal. In some cases, you may need to use a GFI outlet. The GFI outlet will look like this. It has a test button. Mostly, most of them you see have a red and black button on them. This particular one's all white. Some people like this. It looks a little bit better in their home. These need to be placed in the kitchen, a bathroom, out in your garage, outside, even in an unfinished basement. If this outlet detects any difference in voltage, it will automatically shut itself off in one-tenth of a second. Standard singer pole switch. You'll notice it only has two terminals and it'll also have a ground terminal. Doesn't matter where those wires go, you simply put those two wires on there from the old switch onto your new one, hook up your ground wire, and you're ready to reinstall your switch. Another switch you may run into is the three-way switch. You notice this is a little bit larger, and you'll also notice it has three terminals instead of just two. This switch is, allows you to control a light from two separate locations. So, for instance, the, uh, your kitchen from one space, and there's a switch there, and you're coming in from the other side, and there's another switch there. Both those switches control the same light. That's a three-way switch. So, now that you know what type of switch you have, you can go to the store to get that replaced. When you have a three-way switch, two of them are the same color. You'll also have two wires going to that new, that, for coming from that old switch that you'll need to put on the same side. And you'll have a third wire that's a different color that always goes on this darker colored terminal. Again, you have your ground terminal. 
that's where that green wire or that bare wire goes. A couple of reasons you may need to replace your outlet. You might have used it, if it gets used a lot, it'll break, the, the plastic can crack off or the openings come apart or it just, it stops working. Those are some simple reasons why you might need to replace it. So what you'll want to do is pull it out of the wall, so take your flat tip screwdriver, place it on the terminal, turn it counterclockwise, lefty loosey, righty tighty, just remember that. So you want to loosen it up, so you're going to turn it counterclockwise, grab the wire, pull it off, and once you've got that disconnected, you slide it onto your new terminal for your new outlet. You have bronze terminal to bronze terminal. So they, these black wires on the bronze side, you can notice on the other side, you have white wires. The white wires always go on the silver terminal. So you'll disconnect those and place those on the silver terminal. And here you have a bare copper wire. That bare copper wire is the ground. That ground wire goes on the green terminal. Once you have those wires installed on this new outlet, you can reinstall it. Now, when you're ready to change the switch, you'll notice you have two wires. That's a standard single pole switch, which is what we have here. Both color terminals are the same. Doesn't matter where these two wires go. Disconnect the first wire. You can take that wire, slide it off, and you bring up your new switch. It goes on there. Here's where you always need to watch this. You take your pair of pliers, spin that around. So it's now that goes on the terminal correctly. That wire should always wrap around the same way that you're going to tighten it so that that way the wire stays on. When you have a three way switch, make sure you get the two, you'll have two wires that are the same color. Make sure both of those wires go on the same colored terminal. You'll have an odd colored wire, and that will go on the third terminal of the switch. Again, you'll find that you have a ground wire. All of these devices we've talked about today have a ground wire. There's a reason they're there. That's to protect you and your family from electrical shock. This dimmer switch happens to be a rotary dimmer. You push on and off. Standard dimmer you would find in most homes. The reason you would want one of these in a dining room where you don't want the lights on at 100%, you may want to dial them back, set for mood lighting. There's a bunch of different reasons you want to do it on top of energy saving. Now that we've removed this switch here, we know that we have a single pull switch. We have two wires. If you pull out that switch and you see that there's three wires going to it and connected to it, you want to disconnect those three wires. Keep in mind, two are going to be the same little color. color. One will be a different color. When you buy your three-way dimmer, notice here we have two colors that are the same, one that's different. The two colors coming out of the wall would be connected to the two colors that are the same here individually. And the third wire gets connected to the odd colored wire that's coming out of the wall. So our single pull dimmer, it's just a push rotary dimmer. We're going to remove these two wires from the switch. We'll take the first wire connected to one wire on your dimmer. The second wire gets connected to the second wire on your dimmer. In this case, we have a ground wire on the dimmer that gets connected inside the box to the other ground wire. Take the two wires coming in, twist them clockwise. Then you take your wire nut, twisting it clockwise onto the wires until they're snug. You can pull on the wires and the wire nut doesn't come off ready to go. Install that dimmer back into the box and put your cover plate back on and now you'll have control over your light. If for some reason you go downstairs, you've turned your circuit breaker back on, you come up to test the outlet that you just installed and it doesn't work. What you want to do is go back and double check your terminals, make sure that those wires that you've installed are tight in the proper location and that if there are any wire nuts or any other connections in that box, that those are also connected and tight. Once you've double checked all of your connections, you can turn the circuit breaker back on and check your outlet. You should be fine.
All right, moving on. So, your roles and responsibilities in electric. So, the first picture is showing you an uh, electrical meter, which tests volts, ohms. Um, then you have your hot stick, which uh, tells you if, they, if the plug is hot or not. Uh, you got your wire nuts. Um, now this here is pretty much in the wall, showing you like an in the wall box um, and how to connect. And if you look here, this is a diagram of, um, of uh, schematics of how the electrical works in the house from the starting point to the ending point. So if you notice here, this is what is, this is your service line, which is coming from the pole, which is feeding the meter Okay, and the meter is feeding your panel. Now your panel uh, functions to break down electricity. Uh, this is why we have breakers in there. So it pretty much breaks down that 400 and something volts on that power line and breaks it down to a 115, you know, 220 and stuff like that. Any questions on that? Okay, so comparing electricity and plumbing, okay? So if you look at the way this bathroom sink is set up, okay, um, if you look at the way the wires are set up, it's pretty much the same shape. And that's, that's why comparing electricity and plumbing, um, so water flows from supply lines under the pressure, under pressure, right? Then it just goes down, water leaves via drain pipe under no pressure, and water exits under no pressure, okay? So the current leaves neutral wires under no pressure, okay? Works its way down, comes this way, and current flows on the hot wires under pressure, and then here's your switch, okay? So it's pretty much the same flow as water and plumbing. So 12 key electrical terms, and I suggest you guys write these down because you got homework. So uh, take some notes. So the first key of electrical term is known as amp. The second is known as circuit. The third is known as conductor. Fourth is known as con continuity. The fifth is current. Sixth is the hot wire. Seven is the neutral wire. Then you have your overload. Then power. Volts. Watts and ohms. So what I want you guys to do is, when you guys have time, I want you to define what each of these things mean. And then you guys can go ahead and just email them to me when you guys are done, okay? This will pretty much help you understand what these mean and how that helps in the, uh, the electrical field and how to uh, connect and determine what's what. Did everybody get that or just uh, should I move on? Yeah, I got it. Got it. Okay, so electrical safety, three key dangers. Danger number one, arc flashes. Okay, arc flashes uh, is produced by a hot wire touching metal. Um, the positive and the negative are touching metal two positives are touching each other. So that's what creates arc flashes. Then you have- All right, so, so it's a uh, hot wire touching metal, two positives touching each other. And what was the other one? So if you have, um, if you have the hot wire touching metal uh -huh. or touching, then that's gonna create what's called an arc flash. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Right? It, it's, it's that. And then two positives when they touch each other, it's going to yeah. create the arc flash. But what was the third one that you had said? If you take the two hot wires, it's going to create an arc flash and a boom. If you take the neutral and the hot neutral. And the metal, you're going to get an arc and a boom. Okay? Then you have your electrical fire. Okay, electrical fires is, is conducted by either the hot wire um, touching uh, either metal, the box, uh, very slightly, causing a fire in the box. <clears throat> and electrical shock. Okay, uh, electrical shock <clears throat> is most common for those that don't take safety precautions. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, 115 uh, volts doesn't do anything to you, but a 240 will. 240 will send you flying or possibly burn. Um. Or 40 will, will hold, hold you. Yeah, John. What's the highest you can get from an outlet? What's the highest shock you can get from an outlet in a, in a home? In an outlet? 220. Yeah. 220, okay. 220. Okay, moving forward. Okay, electrical safety key. Safety rules. Turn the power off. Remember the guy in the video mentioned that? Before you do any type of electrical work, turn the power off. Just, do you guys know what a, a, a lockout tagout is? No, I don't. So you're gonna learn that. Okay, so a lockout tagout, do you see this thing here? Yeah. So that is a clamp that will go, let's say if uh, there's different ones. So this one is pretty meant for uh, one of those, those fuse boxes that you pull up the handle. So what happens is you put this clamp on, you put a lock on, and then you put this uh, this tag on. Because um, supposedly, let's say two of you are working in a in a unit, and you turn the power off, and there's no way to tell the other technician that this is locked out. Don't turn it on until you know I am done, and the only person who should be turning this back on will be you. So this prevents you from getting killed, shocked, or even seriously hurt. But this would be this would be more used like for a an apartment complex or industrial building, right? Yep. It would be used for any place that has electrical panels. So we have some that go to breakers to prevent you from switching the breaker on. We have industrial ones for big mains. There's different ones for different functions. This all applies to any electrical cutoff. That it that exists in the world. So, so, go ahead, go ahead, Ram. Oh, thank you. Um, so basically, lockout and tagout are the same term, just different words, right? Well, no, lockout, tagout procedure means you locked it out and you tagged it out. Okay, you need to, bo- to you need to do both. Yes, you need to. Do okay. Both, always. So okay. The, the lockout means this here, and the tagout means this tag here, which says do Check. not. Read. Right. Okay. Use personal protection equipment. Okay, so this guy, uh, what does this guy have on? He has a pair of gloves, thick gloves, and he has an electrical test uh, meter. Okay, and also as you can see, he's wearing goggles. Uh, what's the material the gloves are made of? Uh, they're made of fire. Uh, I would say like um, lamb, lamb and leather. Okay. Lamb and leather, because leather doesn't doesn't conduct uh, electricity. It's like a ground, so. Okay? Yep. And uh, use safe tools and equipment. Okay. Does anybody know what this is here? And what the function of this is? No. That's, that's what uh, the guy in the video was explaining, wasn't it? It's like a, a uh, an outlet that measures uh, the... Uh, Oh, I can't remember the word he used, but uh, it, it measures the electricity and the variancy of the electricity. 
And if it notices the difference, it'll shut up in like less than a tenth of a second or something like that. It, something, yeah. It, it's called what's called a GFCI. It's a ground fault circuit interrupter. Oh, um, that's a GFCI. Okay. It's the GFCI, and and according to code, this has to be installed on every countertop that has an outlet. Okay. okay. Um, the inspector will come, and if he does not have a GFCI on every countertop in the kitchen, then he'll give you a violation. Now, what this serves is, is the, if in any case something pops, this will go before the breaker. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> the GFCIs need to be installed anywhere within six feet of a water source. So it's a bathtub, shower, kitchen sink. If it's six feet from there, you need to have that installed. Okay. Okay. Um, the GFCI kind of works like your spinal cord. Um, you know, if, if you have a hot stove and you touch your finger to the to the hotness, whether it's a coil or a flame, you know, you don't think, oh, that's too hot. Let me pull my hand away, right? You just kind of instinctually do it, right? Right. All right, so, so what this GFCI does <clears throat> is <clears throat> um, that reflex is built into your spinal cord to pull away. Uh -huh. You do it so fast that during the time you reach your brain and go back, it's instant. Right. Um, this GFCI, works what it, well, it does, it works the same way. Um, it doesn't allow the juice to travel to the electrical box or the breaker box uh -huh. um, or the rest of the house on the way to the breaker box. So it'll okay. cut it off right there. <clears throat> so anytime you have a, a power out in the kitchen or something, that's usually um, where your thing is. Gotcha. Okay. So thank you, John, for that. Appreciate the uh, input on it. Um, so we're moving forward. Uh, so the electrical system from power plant to apartment community. Okay, so everything happens here, okay? Um, the power plant goes into what's called the transformer, okay? Transformer reduces the amount of power that this is putting out, so it breaks it down so you won't blow any, any houses up, you know, with electrical surges. So then you have your your poles here, which comes from the transformer, which is broken down, and then it services into the houses. So once they go into the houses from here, they go into a meter, which breaks down the current even more to provide amp uh, proper amperage uh, for the house, for you know the apartment the settings, uh, housing, and, and so forth, so and businesses and all that. Okay. Um, so as you can see here, so you got the trans the transmission line, okay. Then you got the power transformer. Then you have the circuit breaker, okay. Then you have your distribution lines, service transformers, okay. Um, you have another service transformer here for businesses, or if you have a transformer in building, you know, uh, and it just keeps moving on, keeps moving on. So everything starts right here with power plant. That's what fuels everything. If this goes down, then we got nothing here. Okay. Any quick questions on that? No. Okay. So um, we saw this one already. Uh, it's pretty much the schematics on how the power is distributed into the house. Okay, so the electrical system in the apartment community. So this is what's called a breaker panel. Okay. Then you have your in the wall boxes for your outlets, switches, light fixtures, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, then you have the tie strips left in place. Okay. Box ground screw, electrical box. Okay, receptacle, receptacle or light fixture uh, from breaker to receptacle, and you have two 14 by two with grounds. Okay, 
she's pretty much telling you what entails and powering up an outlet. Okay, uh, you can see this guy here is changing an outlet. Okay. Light fixture, we don't know what that is. Okay, so this is the diagram of a circuit. All right, so you got your power being fed through here. Okay, then you have your hot wire. Okay, and then you have your neutral, and then you come up in the same thing. So you have hot, and then the, the lighter color will be your neutral wire, the darker one will be your hot wire. Okay. Any questions on that? So yeah, um, when when you're talking about the high, the, I'm sorry, the hot wire and the uh, neutral wire, that's just uh, referencing like the negative and the positive, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. So the key tools for electrical repairs will be there. You go. Okay. You have your goggles, measuring tape, your splicer, your cutters, your alignment pliers, your channel locks, and your screwdrivers. That's all basically what you need for electrical. You're working inside of a house. Nothing. Oh, wait, and there's, can someone tell me what's missing here? Uh, safety gloves. Huh? Safety gloves. Okay, anything else? Uh. That, I can't remember the name, the machine to measure the uh, voltage. Okay, so there's a number of things that are missing here. One being electrical tape. Oh yeah. Very important. Okay, your gloves, your meter, and your tester. Okay, so a few items that are supposed to be here are not here. Okay, then you have, what is this called guys? I don't know. Oh, I'm not sure. Let you lock out tag out. Correct. Oh, lock out tag out. Okay. Right. So I'm both saying there's different ones. Yeah. Oh, okay. So if you look at all of these, these are your locks, then you have your breaker. And then you have the tags at the bottom. Main panels and so on and so forth. Okay. Okay. These are your tags. All right. Got it. A ladder. Now, I don't agree with a metal a metal ladder doing electricity, only because of the conductivity. You know, I would prefer like a wood ladder. Um, the wood ladder it conducts electricity, but not as fast as a metal ladder would. So I would suggest a wood ladder. John, would you agree? Uh, wood or fiberglass, yeah. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> moving on. Okay. Does anyone know what this is? What just came up? It's the measure of the electric. Outlet tester. Correct. So you notice here you have three colors, right? Yeah. And then over here you have a color chart. Mm -hmm. now, what this tells you is is if you have a reverse neutral, you don't have a ground. Okay, if if um it's not connected properly, and then if it's connected properly. So I always tell people to get the one that you can actually trip a GFI with because um, that'll tell you if the GFI works or not. Okay. So this is to measure any sort of outlet or just the GFI? This is to test any outlet to make sure that it's correct, that it's connected properly. Okay. Okay. This is what's called the hot stick. Okay. The hot stick is to check for power. So if you take the outlet apart and you're not sure if you turned off the power, then you will use this on the uh, positive wire, which is the hot wire, which is the black wire. Sometimes they're red. Okay. And that'll tell you this, if there's a current coming through there and it'll beep. Okay. And then you have your electrical tester. Um, this is mainly used for checking the mains. Um, you could use it in the house as well. You know, plug both little pins into the plugs uh, and give you uh, voltage, measures all, measures different different things. So 
voltage, ohms, uh, DC power, and so on and so forth. Okay. Any questions? Okay, let's talk about a multimeter. Okay, so this is what's a multimeter. Uh, this pretty much uh, presses amount of power coming from the line. Okay, um, if you want to go and check, let's say, to make sure that it's actually kicking out 240, then you can set it to 240 and it should give you. If it doesn't give you the 240, then there's a problem. Okay. So the same thing. Okay, this this is an old school voltage meter. Um, I don't even think that exists anymore. But uh, but that's what they pretty much the first probably meter that ever came out. You know, for to uh, to measure electricity. So using a multimeter, how to measure voltage at a receptacle. Okay, you pretty much put it to the B voltage, and you put both pins in, that'll give you number up here, okay, which should be, you know, 120 around there. Okay, how to test for continuity. Okay, so you pretty much put the pins into the plug from the meter, and then tells you if the outlet is actually going to operate or not. Okay. And how to measure resistance. So here, this, this is a, a, a stove range for an electrical stove. Okay. So essentially what you do is you take your meter and you put um, the positive into the terminal in where the stove is and you would find a uh, metal where you could put the other part on so you can get your, your reading. Okay. Any questions on that? Um, I do have a question. Is the standard uh, voltage for outlets in general in the States 120? No. Yes. Yes. 120 and 220. Well, uh, when, when is it used this differently? Is like, oh, okay. Commercial is a totally different story. You can get up to 240 in commercial. Any, any okay. But uh, as for residential, it's pretty much, you know, 120, you know, um, <clears throat> for the outlets, any current that's coming in. Um, now, when like you, you that, that's what we were talking about with that dryer, right? When it was 220 because it's a heavier uh, appliance? Yes. Correct. So when you have three wires, you know, if you take a tester and you, te and you test the two positives, you're going to get 240. Because now you're getting, you know, 115, 115 coming through, or 120, 120 coming through. All right? Got it. So electrical wires. So you have different gauges of wiring, uh, and they serve different purposes. So the, the thicker gauge, uh, which I don't see it here, it's pretty much to bring in a line from outside into a panel. Um, so these are different gauges. So you have 12, 12, 12 and two, um, <clears throat> you have 12 gauge, you have 10 gauge, you got five gauge, um, and it all, you know, it all services a main function, okay? Um, but we're gonna move forward. So the wire materials, okay? Uh, so every wire should have some type of insulation. Should have some type of insulation. Never use a bare wire to connect anything. Okay. Um, this is what is this, guys? Uh, wire stripper. Wire cutter. Correct. It's a. Uh, it's one of the tools that you need, like basically, right? Correct. That's okay. what you're gonna need. Okay. Color coding. Okay. Color coding. It's. Uh, no, black, green. The standard is pretty much white, black, and green. And green's, green is the what? Anyone? We're good. So if it's green, you wouldn't have any green. No. Green is ground. Green is ground. Okay. Green is ground. Black is hot. 
white neutral neutral, neutral. um black can also be red right black can also be red okay positive can also be red okay and then the wire size so here this wire cutter has different size as you can see so this would be for 10 gauge 12 gauge 14 16 18 20 to 22 okay so you would think that in the electrical term you would think the higher the gauge the thicker would it be right right well that's not the case okay it all starts from low to high the low being the biggest and high being the smallest okay so always remember that what do the actual numbers stand for the, the gauges the gauge wiring oh, okay okay that that's uh so you can cut a 10 gauge wire from here you can cut a 12 gauge wire here you can cut a 14 gauge wire here 16 gauge 18 gauge 20 to 22 gauge so okay. quick question yeah so when you're uh, <clears throat> when you're wiring a home and you're uh bringing it bringing it from the from not from the uh, meter into the breaker box or the box, but the wiring from the box that feeds into the to the rest of the house. What's the gauge on that? It could be uh, twelve gauge. It can be eighteen gauge. It depends. So the standard the standard wire for the houses, like for like the one twenty. You see, this uh, here? you see the thickness of it? Yeah. Got to be your, your pretty much your your wires is coming from the breaker. It's coming from the outlets to the breakers. So it's the thinner wire. Yes, it's right here. It's, uh, this one here, it's going to, this is like a 16? 17. 17. Yeah, it's between a 16 and 17 gauge. Um, and that that's what, uh, but you can also use, you know, uh, a 12. You can also use 12 gauge. Okay. You know? Um, so it depends. You know, as long as you don't go above 12, then you, you, you should be fine. I mean, and when you mean above is like 10, right? Uh, no. A, above could be, yeah, like a 10 gauge. Okay. You know, like remember, because the higher it is, it's what? It's lower. The thinner. Uh, thinner. No. The higher it is, it's what? The opposite of thinner? Uh, thicker? thicker? Uh, correct. Okay. I... So you have your 10, which is thick, goes down, goes up to 20, which is thin. Okay? Okay. Those oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Get it now? Yeah. Okay. And then cable. Okay. So main service panels, fuses, and circuit breakers. All right, so now we get into the breakers. Okay, this is your standard panel, okay? Um, if you see here, these are your breakers, okay? This right here is your main line coming in from your meter, okay? This right here is what breaks down the power all this and then this provides power to different areas of the house okay this right here is called the neutral bar okay all your neutral wires will go on this bar here okay all your hot wires will be connected right into your breaker okay so neutral is who's going to get you from getting shocked all right so uh, as you can see here, this is a double pole breaker, okay? Um, this pretty much is always used for, let's say, uh, a 220 dryer, um, uh, 220 air conditioner, um, anything that is required 220 voltage, this is right here what, what you're going to store, okay? Same thing with, you know, with here as well. So here goes two hot wires. Two positive wires go in here. And the neutral goes where? In the panel. The bottom. What's the bottom called? Uh, I forgot. My guys, I just said it. 
the neutral bar. Neutral bar, okay. Okay. So these are your old conventional fuses. Surprisingly or not, houses, some houses still use this. Okay. My house. Uh, you have different uh, different amperage. Okay. You have 15, 20s, and 30s. Okay. Uh, this is what you call a buzz fuse. These are buzz fuses. You'll see this a lot in um, AC units, like uh, HVAC um, furnaces and stuff like that, as well as the uh, air conditioner, central air, uh, even in the outside. You see a be pretty big on the outside. Okay, so this this function as a breaker or a fuse for that unit. So what's the the specific purpose of a fuse? To give power to give power to the lines. Okay, so it's well, a fuse is actually a safety device. Okay. So what will happen is um, if you get an excessive amount of power or an inconsistent amount of power, um, instead of destroying the whole line, the fuse is the weakest part of that line. And that's the part that will go first and let you have a problem. Okay. Breaker. That could break her. If something pops in the wall, if that'll, that'll shut the break off right away. That'll kill power. Right. Okay. Um, so the fuse, it, it serves as a, as a safety as well as a conductor. And for example, I know it shouldn't be done, but for example, let's say the, the, the actual breaker for the dining room is off, but, but the main switch is on. Does that make it safe to work in that area, or do you need to switch everything off? No, you can switch. You can, I mean, if, if, if it's actually lined up the same way it is here, then all you have to do is switch off the dining room. Oh, okay, okay. In a lot of instances, a lot of, a lot of these things are not labeled properly. Okay. I will go ahead and shut all of them off, if, just, just to be on the safe side. Sure. Um, in the real world, if it's lined up the way it is like this, so let's say you want to work in the rain, okay? You can easily just pop this breaker right off, and you kill power to the to, to the stove. Okay. Okay. Um, but if it's not labeled, let's say you got three of these, right, and they're not labeled, so we don't know wh which one is the range. So you can do two things. If you're with somebody, have them with a hot stick, and the plug, and you flip the breaker, whatever whichever breaker shuts off the power, then you're good. But always, yeah. always turn the power off. Sure. So let's get into wall switches. Okay. So remember he, the guy mentioned single pole, mm -hmm. okay, which only has positive and a negative and a ground. <coughs> so the single pole, the mid circuit wiring. Okay. So the hot, now keep in mind, these are color coded. So the gold screw is always going to be the hot wire and the silver screw is always going to be the neutral wire. Okay, um, so you have your hot wire, which is going to the gold, to the gold screw, and then you know you have the neutral, which is coming in connected to neutral, and so on and so forth. Okay. Any questions? The neutral goes to the bronze, right? No, I, Alex, I just said the bronze is hot, the silver is neutral. All right. Um, how do you call the, the the caps that he used in the video to twist the uh, cables together? Uh, wire nuts. Uh, come, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Wire nuts. Oh, okay, thanks. Okay, so three-way switch, remember you said, so if I have these two bronze, what am I connecting there? The hot. Correct. Okay, and the green, the green screw indicates what? The ground. Ground. Okay, and then you have your common, okay, and your traveler. All right, so any questions on that? So your common would be? Um, common, neutral, your, your neutral, yeah, okay. Okay, so 
Okay, so testing a three-way wall switch. All right. Uh, so you have your light switch. Okay. And you have your light fixture and you have your light switch. Any one of you guys have this in your house? Where you go to one end of the hallway and you flip this on and the light comes on, you go to the other end, you flip it off and it goes off? Mm, not here, but I've seen it. So yeah, so actually we have we have here in the house. So the way this works is it's uh uh when this is on, okay, it will flip power, okay, and then when this is off, it'll it'll cut the power. But this switch is still be on on the on position, but there's no power coming through. Okay. Yeah, I have something like that with my um, switch and my fan and the mm -hmm. fan light. Okay. So, hey John, you wanna you wanna you wanna comment on the setup here? Um. <clears throat> so what, you know, a good way to look at this for layman is to think of electricity as water. Okay, if you cut off the flow at any point, the whole thing's going to be done. Okay, so if you follow the wires, you can see they're all pretty much interconnected. Wouldn't you agree with that, Nelson? Yep. All right, and if you disconnect one, you're just taking that, that pressure out of the whole system, or you're turning it on depending on where you're at. So, you know, that's a good way to look at it. Does it help out at all a little bit? Okay. It does. I mean, it, it's it's just it's just the same thing. Like, I'm just looking at it right now, and I'm picturing the way it's set up in my house, and it makes more sense as to what happens. Like, like as to um, if I if, if I take one one wire out why some things don't work in the other room. <laughs> yeah, so if you if you was to take one one of these wires out, then your switches will not operate. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, okay, we're moving forward from this. All right, duplex receptacles. So this is the front. Okay. This is what's called the ground. Okay. Um, so you have your hot terminals. What color is that, guys? Gold. Gold. Good. Bronze. Then you have your neutral terminal screws. And what color is that? Silver. Correct. Now, uh, you guys are wondering why we have holes behind here, right? Yeah. So the holes will function as the same thing as if you was to just connect the wire directly to this. I prefer this method here because then I don't have to worry about using electrical tape or this thing touching metal. So you have both options when working with the outlet? Yes, you do. Okay. You have both options. You just stick it right in there. And what it does is it's like, it's like a shrug pipe, like that plumbing fixture shrug pipe. It goes in, it just grabs. It's the same thing function with this. Just kind of push it in there. You know, it's like, it's like a snake. You know how a snake has that tooth that you bite to, it's hard to get them off? Yeah. Yes. So you, you have the option to use, the only option you don't have is with the ground wire. You have to connect it directly to the screw. Okay. And what is the the, the small rect rectangle um, right under the circles, the, the slots for the wire? Uh, yeah, those. It's pretty much nothing. It's just a little indication. It's yeah. to release the um, wire if you want to take it out. Yeah, it releases the little clamp on it. Yeah, just pretty much take a little flathead screwdriver in there. So if I get an yeah. indication Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Then, so, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. One other thing with the bronze and the white, um, you will run into some outlets that don't have the bronze color. Some of them will have black screws. Um, but every outlet <clears throat> does have white screws for the white wire. If you got black, bronze, pink, purple, whatever, that's always your bronze side but they'll always have a white side for the neutrals. Okay. So with this type of an outlet, you can clamp it to the holes instead of uh, screwing it to the side? Yes. You can just stick it in the hole. 
And then some outlets will tell you hot wire here and neutral wire here. So if you're not sure of the colors, always look, it, it would always say hot wire and neutral wire, okay? okay? Got it. So testing the receptacles. Again, here's that, here's that thing again. What is this used for? Um, to test for any errors in the, the installation, uh, depending on the on the code, it will tell you what what's going on, right. what's wrong. Exactly. Okay, what is that called? Uh, hot uh, hot rod, hot something. <laughs> Sorry, hot. Um, do you remember, Alex? <laughs> hot stick. Hot stick. Yeah. What is what is that? What are you checking with that? You're checking to see if there's any current. Correct. Right. Um, does it tell you how much power is going through, or do you need the? You need the tester. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What what, what the stick tells you? It just like, I think, and that's what I'm assuming. It's a little light, so I think if there's current, and like what you said earlier, it gives you like a little buzz, and then the light turns on, doesn't it? No. So the 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 light that thing there will start flashing. And it'll start making a beeping noise. Beeping, I'm sorry, yeah. Right. Okay. So beeping. that'll tell you if there's current flowing through. And okay. guys, what is this up here? Uh, multimeter? Multimeter. Multimeter. Uh, multimeter. multimeter, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, used to the, so used to the term in Spanish, it's <laughs> multimetro, so <laughs> get confused, <laughs> sorry. You just call <laughs> Spanglish right now. Yeah. He's on the right track, so very good. <laughs> sorry. Okay, so replacing a receptacle, okay? So, Alex, mm -hmm. I want you to walk me through this. Replacing a receptacle. Okay, so first, we gotta make sure we turn off the light, I mean the power. Correct. Okay, so the first thing is uh, you unscrew um, the, the uh, I can't remember the, the name, on the side, on the, on the Panel? No. Unscrew the screw. Yeah, but the siding, I can't remember the name. He used the, or there's a name that is used to unscrew that, that panel or whatnot. You unscrew it. What panel? And, well, what not the panel, panel, like the, the siding of the. Uh, you mean the cover plate? The, yeah, the cover plate. So you unscrew that where the bronze and the uh, silver at is at. You unscrew the, 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 the screw and you unhook it. And then you hook it to the other outlet, right? Mm -hmm. And then you do the same thing with the other ones. Okay. Good. So it's pretty much simple. Um, one thing I like to tell people is if you're going to take something apart and you're not sure, take a picture of it. Okay. okay. So you pretty much take this off, take the wires off, take the ground off and then reconnect the wires together. Now, when, when I've changed an outlet, and, and I've had to do it several times here, what I do, I don't know if it, I mean, yes, of course, I turn off the light. I mean, the power, sorry. Turn off the power from the breaker. But what I tried to do is uh, similar to what the guy did in the last, um, I think it was the last uh, example he was doing. He, uh, he unscrewed took off the wire and hooked it up to the other one that he was replacing it to. You can do that too. Okay, so there's no there's no right or wrong way to do well, it. Well, okay. there is a right or wrong way to do it. Okay. If you take your your, new, your neutral wire and put it on the hot side. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, but I'm, what I mean is as long as you're doing it on the side it's supposed to be right. done. Correct. Like, okay. The reason I say that is because sometimes, like when you say take a picture to avoid not doing it right, you know, I just, I'm sorry? Not doing it wrong. Yeah, to avoid uh, doing it wrong, what I've done is just unhooked it from the side that I know it has to go on the new one and just hooked it right off the bat, like instead of hooking everything off, then putting everything back in. Correct. Okay. Now, there's one thing that i like to add is, mm -hmm. you know, with your method, Alex, there of taking off one and putting on the other one, you want to actually test the outlet you're taking out 
to make sure the wiring is good. Because you might be taking a, a good receptacle that is bad wiring and wiring it up bad again, you have the same problem. Uh, okay. 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 Um, moving forward. Oh, what is this? What is this, guys? GFCI. What is the main purpose of the GFCI? It's uh, to cut off the, uh, the, 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 the power when there's uh, when when the when the current or, or the uh, voltage is uh, irregular, it's like uh, it shuts off. It's like a shut off valve. Ram. Yeah, it will um, automatically just uh, shut down the power in that outlet extremely fast to prevent any any damage to the rest of the circuit. Okay. In in what case will this thing? Uh, if voltage gets too high, or if there's a shortage in the line. Oh, okay. Or if something is plugged in where it's high, it'll, it'll shut off. Okay. So replacing the GFCI. So the GFCI has two components. You have your load side and you have your line side. Okay. Um, the load terminal. Okay, and the line terminal. Um, the line terminal is where you want to go ahead and plug in your hot and uh, neutral. Okay. 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 So the load is the hot. No, no, Alex, listen to me. The line terminal is where you want to hook up your hot, hot. and your neutral. You're going to have your your gold and your silver screw. Okay. Okay. The low terminal. It's pretty much if you're gonna connect an outlet to make it a GF a GFI. Okay. 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 So if you have a back-to-back -back bathroom and they're both sharing the wiring for the for the plugs, you would go ahead and just put a regular outlet in the other bathroom and wire it, and then put the wires up to the uh, to the load terminal. Okay, and then that outlet becomes a GFCI as well. So basically, the GFCI is able to to give the same effect to both its own outlet and a second one. Correct. So the load terminal is like an it's like an adapter to another. Yes. Yeah. To okay. another outlet. Correct. So you see here how this is set up. So your yeah. line here. Is your power source okay and then your load you see how it's coming from the outlet mm -hmm. and it's coming into the top which is the load right and this is the load is feeding power to this outlet from the line so okay. if, if you was to let's say plug in a hair dryer and it gets too high or whatever then this is shut off the GFCI which cut power to both of these outlets Okay, moving forward. All right, so uh, incandescence light fixtures, okay? Um, when you take apart a light fixture, most of the time you would have three wires, okay? Um, you'll have your hot, okay, your neutral, okay? Um, you have two wires and you're going to connect the light you eliminate one of the hot wires okay um so with installing a light fixture okay you have your electrical box okay you have your support bracket okay um your ground wire will get connected to that support bracket okay or if there's a or if there's a ground here in this this picture. So if you see here, there's only two wires coming out of this picture. There's no ground. Yes. So if there was a ground coming out of here, then your line ground will be connected to the ground from that fixture. Okay. Okay. So there's either uh, somewhere on the fixture to connect the ground or the support bracket. Correct. Can you have both? Like. Uh, well, you can have both, but you know, why would you want to connect both? Yeah, sure. 
Or you, you know, you could have one or the other. Just, just whatever. Yes. Okay. Um. So yeah, that, that's that's that with that. Um. Then you have your ground wire, and then you have your base, your socket, your globe. You know, and all that goes connected. Okay. So removing an incandescent light fixture. Okay, so I just call it. Um, I I can't hear Nelson. I can you hear able you. To? Can you hear me? Yeah, no. I, I can hear you now, yeah. Sorry. So removing an incandescent light fixture. So we just pretty much saw the installation of a light fixture. Let's look at dismantling of a light fixture. So what is the first thing this guy is doing? He's turning off uh, the power. Correct. Okay. Then uh, what's the next thing he's doing? He's going to have to disassemble the fixture. Correct. So he's taking off the support bracket. Okay. And then these are the wire nuts. Okay. He's removing these screws from the bracket, okay? <coughs> Taking everything apart. So now, if this guy was smart, you know, hey, uh, what's missing here? The ground, ground wire. Ground wire. There's no ground wire connected. So, pretty much taking it apart. I recommend that anytime you guys ever do take a light fixture apart, when you take out the hot wire, make sure you cap it off. Make sure you put a wire nut on it because anything can happen. You might brush up against it while you're up there and touch, you know, holding the light fixture or something on metal and, you know, you're going to get shocked. But the trick is that if you turn off, you don't really have to turn the breaker off. If you turn off the light switch to that light fixture, it kills the power to the, to the, to the line. So you don't necessarily have to shut off, uh, shut off your breaker. But just to be safe, you know, just go ahead and do it. Guys who are coming into this new, always shut off the breaker. Okay. Wouldn't you agree, John? Yes. Okay, and this is. Um, I don't know. An electrical tester. Okay. Okay. Is that like a multimeter? Or is that uh, this is pretty much just. Test its volts, uh, voltage. Multimeter tests ohm and voltage and DC power and so on. That's why it's called a multimeter because it can check different types of power sources. Okay. And what's the name of this one again? I'm sorry. An electrical meter. Or electrical tester. Okay. Testing and replacing a socket. Okay, so this is a socket. This is where the light the light bulbs goes in. So it's pretty much the same thing. Um, you notice you have here you have two sockets, right? So how many wires are you going to have on this socket? Four. Four. Correct. And why would you have four? Because you're going to have two light bulbs and each needs uh, a hot wire and a neutral. Awesome, good job, thank you, awesome. Okay, so that's pretty much what that is. Okay. Um, so this is your standard socket. Okay, uh, this individual sockets, you have your hot wire and you have your neutral, okay. So fluorescent light fixtures. Now fluorescent light fixtures are a little put that aside, please. Uh, fluorescent light fixtures are a little different because now the fluorescent light fixtures work with palaces, um, which is a totally different uh, entity for connection. Um, so there it is, guys. So this is a fluorescent light fixture. Okay, you have your twelve T eight bulbs. They come in four and eight. Okay. Um, tube socket, your starter, which is like uh, the fuse, um, 
temperature base and the ballast. This is the ballast here. Okay. What what is the ballast? We're gonna get into that right now. Okay. Okay, so common problems and solutions. Okay. <clears throat> you have your socket here, right? Okay. Some of these sockets are just one single hole, uh, which has a little, just one pin. Some of these are two. You put that upward and twist it, okay, to, to meet the con connectivity, okay? Um, indication that the bulb is going bad, okay, this is normal. You start seeing that black around, that means the bulb needs to be changed, okay? This is a ballast, okay? The ballast is here. The ballast pretty much feeds power to, to all these wires that are in here. You have yellow, blue, um, white, <clears throat> black. There's, diff there's different colors in the ballast that you connect to. Okay? Cool. All right. Um, any questions on the, on the uh, fixtures? No. So we're going to move into hard wire smoke detectors and carbon monoxide. Okay, we all know that we need to test, make sure it beeps. Okay, now, these are your, your hardwired uh, testers here, uh, your smoke detectors. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with this black and yellow, and it's white, but uh, I'm gonna assume the yellow is gonna serve as the ground. So it's all, you connect that, and then it connects to the, you know, plug it right in, okay? So it works basically like a, a light fixture, right? Correct. So see, you have your, uh, your black, red, and then you have your white. Okay. So as you notice, can someone tell me this is see how this is capped off? I'm sorry. You see that you see this wire here. Yeah. It's capped off. You see that? Yeah. So that's because this is a one ten. Uh, smoke detector. So if you connect this and this together and this, you're going to blow that smoke detector because now you're feeding 240 volts. You understand? Okay. So this is just made just in case if you have, you know, if this a would, different one. Correct. So this will always be capped off. So you only use black and white. Okay? Yeah. All right. So. Thank you for being part of today's electrical repair and maintenance course.